Even a bounty hunter knows that friendship can't be bought by a bonus. Spare it like your ammo. Stirring awake as I felt a prick in my leg, the numbing sensation of medex filled me with a profound warmth, making the stiff boards I laid on seeming like the most comfortable place in the wastes. Of course, now that I was awake, that fantasy had to be boxed back away into the back of my mind, like so many other mornings filled with the rest of my disappointing life. My shoulder was still bound tightly, meaning that they had not patched me up since I was out. But I didn't so much care as the painkiller worked magnificently to dull down the pain. She's lucky that bullet went through cleanly. From Harmony's voice, I could tell she was pissed. It's bad enough that Shortstaff made the call to save the Pegasus, but on top of that, you tell me that he knew that Storm came from an orchard, and he still agreed to bring her along. He groaned and sat down on the floor. Not going to lie, having my oldest friend sound like I was some monster was not exactly what I was expecting to wake up to. He never heard what I did from Dad, but those places... Full of nothing but trouble. Glad to know, I grumbled as I tried to push myself up, that I'm so loved. Even through the medics, my shoulder burned like hell to hold my weight. She made a move to speak, but I shifted my hoof to silence her, using it as a good excuse to get my weight off of it anyway. I don't really care if you meant it or not. How are the others? I went to get up, but stumbled slightly. Pallet stepped forward and let me lean on her as I spoke. Well, short staff sh should be fine, but Stimpak says that he doesn't know if our mysterious Pegasus will make it. She gave me a small nuzzle. I'm just glad you two are alright. You might just be my cousin, and that we aren't really family, but it'd be a shame to lose you just the same. Cut the ship, Pallet. I pushed her away and got up. Harmony said it herself. I'm trouble. Always have been, always will be. Probably more so now that I know I'm some fucked up pre-war abomination of science. That ain't what I was saying. She crossed her hooves across her chest and looked away defiantly. Well, that's how it sounded from my end. Wobbly, I made my way to her. And since you claim to know that I'm trouble... Maybe you can enlighten me as to explaining just what the hell I am? My shoulder burned as I reached out and prodded her chest, forcing her to pay attention to me. Cause I'm all ears, Harmony. All I have are broken memories, fragments of entries from the doctor claiming to be my father, and the knowledge that the one pony I trusted most back when uh, abandoned her daughter, before going on to blow up the whole goddess damn planet. She took a step back from me as my words cut deep her muzzle trembling as her watery eyes were locked into mine. My verbal assault was relentless, and I didn't feel like I had gotten my point across. You're right, in that I'm not like you. You have a brother and a family that you can call your own. I wasn't born, I was built. Equestria wanted to make me a weapon, something that could win them their petty fucking war. And all I've ever wanted was to help. Fuck, Harmony. Even you, around you, I try so fucking hard to be a good friend. But now you cast me aside just as quickly as they did when they learned that I wasn't what they wanted me to be. You can call me a monster all you want, but that news is reaching these ears a century and a half too fucking late to mean anything more. Storm, there's no need to use such harsh words. Pala's voice was soft, and even though I didn't really want to, I needed to get this out. She didn't mean what she said. I felt her hoof brush across my cheek, wiping the tears I hadn't realized I had been crying. In the silence that followed, Harmony simply got up, walked to the door, and left. I sat back and twisted my hoof around, staring at the three-shaped uh, star that I had on it. I closed my eyes shut, clenching them hard as I tried to remember when I got it, dredging my mind for a fleeting memory. The spark of a feeling anything. There was nothing there to grab hold of. The ease in which I found them before was gone like the friend I had just blown up on. 
I didn't ask for this pallet. I shook my head slowly, wanting to just wind back the clock to last week and to run as far from what my life was as possible. I know that there's good in you, Storm. I've seen it since you were just a bright-eyed filly. She was doing her best to comfort me, but I didn't need comfort. I needed answers. I just don't know what to think anymore. I opened my eyes and looked at the door. I think it's best if we both just cool off for a while. She's already got enough to deal with right now. As I limped towards the door, she let out a disappointed sigh. With a sigh of my own, I asked the one thing that I couldn't help uh, get off my mind. Do you know where Prettius is? He... She hesitated. I knew Pallet wanted me to stay, but I couldn't. I needed to work, and I think she knew that. He's at Casks. Thank you, Pallet. I gave her a weak smile. It's good to know you still stand by me, no matter what. I pushed against the old wooden door and left Harmony's shop, turning towards the markets to head toward Cask's watering hole. Of all the places he could have gone, and with as smart as he is, I would have assumed he would have picked a better dump to crawl into. Then again, he does have a bounty on his head, so it might not have been the bad place to lie low. My vision flickered to pink for a moment as Pi popped into my vision. Hey sis, mind if we talk for a moment? Not really in the mood. I looked around to make sure that no pony was listening in. You need to keep a low profile when I'm around others. I don't want any pony freaking out because I have a computer pony living in my pit buck. The color shifted to blue and Pi let out a sniffle. Why would they hate me when I'm just trying to be friendly? Is it just that you're embarrassed by me? She slumped down to the bottom of my vision. No, it's not that. I shook my head. I told you it was different out here, and ponies in the wasteland fear new things. I stopped as a pair of trench-coated mares walked up the street, stopping in front of casks. I stopped and averted my gaze to a food cart I just happened to be strolling by, and hoped that, I, that they couldn't hear me seemingly talking to myself. The last thing I needed in this town was a reputation for being crazy. My vision flashed pink. Um, sis? Quiet, not now. I spat out in a harsh whisper, and I stared intently at the warm image of a smiling carrot nestled in a bun of mustard as it was poured into it. Pie's muzzle disappeared from her face. With the help of a digital arrow, she quickly got to work flailing her hooves towards my EFS bar. I groaned as my eyes found two marks that were red amongst the sea of pink. And, as I looked back towards the bar, the red bars moved into it as the mares did. One of them was a unicorn, and as she entered, I saw the quick flash of her magic pull a small square of paper from her coat. Shit. I growled out as I pushed myself to a gallop. Of course bounty hunters would never show up here, because my life is perfect and nothing ever goes wrong. I'm so tired of shit not going my way because I haven't had a single damned lucky break in my life. Even before I reached the door, I could hear the panicking gasps of the patrons before they fled out the doorway. It was tough, but I pushed myself through the river of ponies, getting inside just as the flow tapered off. The bartender had his head peeked about the desktop, his eyes peering between the various half-finished drinks to the corner of my left. Next to the fireplace stood two well-worn-looking mares, each of them standing at each other's side of the table, where a very unnerved-looking Prius sat. Hey! I shouted, making the earth pony turn to look at me. Her olive green coat turned a mottled brown as my eyes looked at half her head. The burn that covered that half of her head was punctuated by the sharp pink eyes that glared at me. I really wished that I had grabbed my coat, taking a step forward and pointing to Prius. Back off! I've already claimed this bounty! Find your own. Sorry, sugar. Despite half her head looking like a rotten apple, her voice was sweet as silk. But he's property of the gumdrop sisters now. She hooked her coat open, just enough to reveal a bit to a large, scoped revolver. Now, I suggest that it's you who find your own. She leaned her head down towards the bit. Or, if you think you're faster on the draw than I am, 
As the other merc glanced over to me as well, I reached my neck down slowly, knowing exactly how these situations always ended up. I bit down on the bit to my 45 auto pistol I'd always used, instead only snapping my teeth around air. In that moment, I remembered that I woke up from the falling in the facility. It was gone. Had I dropped it somewhere? I don't remember taking the holster off when I woke up, and I haven't really thought about where it was until now. Sis, look out! The second mare shouted as she swung at Prideus, knocking the very pistol I had misplaced from his magic. And that fucking dick had stolen it! Using the chaos to my advantage, I lunged at the mare with a revolver, slamming into her with my shoulder, getting more of a pained yelp from my muzzle than hers. She was quick to react, though, rolling away from my hit and onto her side, before she used all four of her hooves to kick me away. I slammed into a table loaded with half-finished drinks, sending them to the floor in a spectacular display of broken glass and strong fumes. She reached for her revolver as I tried to get up, and the two of us locked in a vicious glare. The report of the bartender's shotgun made the four of us fighting freeze in place. All four of you, out! He shouted as he leveled the shotgun over me and towards the others. I broke my gaze from the burned mare to look over to Prideus, where the other mare pressed back just about above the fire in the fireplace. And my glowing orange forty-five in his magic. Consider yourselves banned from my bar, seeing as you know the rules about no scuffles inside the town. This isn't over, bitch. The burned mare scowled and shrugged her trench coat back up, covering her gun as she stepped by slowly. Her sister only growled as Prideus stepped back from her, her horn glowing as it picked up a large sniper rifle that had been set against the doorframe. Prius looked to my gun, watching as the plastic parts of the bit melted away from the heat of the fire. He tossed it to the floor and stepped over to me, holding his hoof out. I took it as he grunted as he pulled me up, looking at the very unhappy cask as he followed us with his gun. I didn't so much care about being banned from this shitty bar, as I was concerned that the actual good places won't let me in anymore. We made our way to the bar and back out onto the streets, catching the angry glares of the displaced bar-goers as they hung around outside. I steered the two of us back towards Harmony's shop, whining as each step was agony, even through the medics. I'm no doctor, but I don't think that shoulder is supposed to look that lumpy. Prudius pointed out as he strode effortlessly beside me. I felt my eye twitch in annoyance. Next time you're going to tell me it's not supposed to hurt this much. I shot back with a roll of my eyes. He caught my glance and nudged his head towards Stimpak's place. I let out a deep sigh and thought that maybe I, it wasn't such a bad idea to get myself patched up a bit. At the very least, deal with his shoulder before it gets infected. Alright, I'll go. But you need to stay in Harmony's shop and keep to the back room. No more bounty hunters will look. Sure thing, Storm. He replied cheerfully and pranced off past me without a care in the world. That stallion was a few screws shy in the head. Of that, I was damn sure. But as long as he's alive, I can finish this contract. I turned myself to cross the street, heading for Stimpak's clinic and cringing at the thought. What is worse, having the injury and the risk of dying by infection, or being charged extra for over-medication because Doc Stim was going to pamper his earth pony patient? I hung my head. I hate my life. I took a deep drag of my cigarette as I sat outside of Harmony's shop, letting the 200-year-old uh, cigarettes run through my body. Stimpak used one of his last healing potions in stock to treat my shoulder, also relocating it from the fight in the bar. Iron Will had showed up a few minutes ago. Short Staff was weak, but alive and awake, and our Pegasus... Mysterious Stallion was still in stable but unconscious condition. Overall, things were finally going well. My ears perked as the door to Harmony's shop opened, and my oldest friend walked over and sat down beside me. 
I hoofed my half-empty cigarette pack up as I spat out the ashen butt of one I'd just finished, batting on a new one before offering Harmony one of her own. She shook her head and pushed it away with her hoof. I'm sorry, Storm. She spoke as I reached around in my satchel, pulling my lighter back out for the fifth time in as many minutes. The tip glowed as the fire burned it, my hoof flicking the snap of the lighter shut as I inhaled deeply, holding it in as I thought about our fight earlier. No, you were right. I blew the smoke out slowly, leaning back and lying on the dirt as I relaxed. Trouble likes to follow me. Always has, always will, I suppose. True as that may be, you're not a monster. She clenched her eyes and put her forehoof against her temple. I just... Panicked is all. Putting her hoof down, she looked down to me as I took another drag from my cigarette. My father gave his life away to stop a mare who came from one of those places. And even though I've known all my life, for a split second I'd forgotten that. Look, everything's in the past. And that facility ceased to be important when the war ended. I'm Storm Rider. Whatever came before her is long dead. I nudged her as I spoke. And besides, I'm just glad we ran into Palette and your brother. Project Harmony or not, there was no way I was going to make it past all those raiders alive. Really? That's what y'all are called? Harmony allowed out a chuckle and laid back next to me. Guess uh, they couldn't have known you had friends with an actual real Harmony. You aren't really a Harmony, though. Your name is Harmonic Drive, so in a sense, I'm the real Harmony. I smiled before taking another drag on my cigarette, flicking it away as I saw Pallet dip down into view through the metal framework of the roadway. I blew out the smoke as she touched down, getting back to my hooves as I looked her over. Hey, you good enough to do me a favor? Depends on the favor. She smiled and winked at me. I couldn't help but blush from that, trying to recover my composure quickly. Uh, there's a couple of bounty hunters who want me dead. Found them earlier in the bar, and I know they'll be waiting to ambush Pred and I outside of town. Yeah, I spotted them from my flight earlier. They set up in the craggy hills about twenty minutes to the southeast. Showed her fetlock over uh, her forehoof and looked away. I'm pretty sure they saw me as well, so I don't think I'll be able to help. In one of their rounds zipped through the cloud I was skimming under, so one of them is a pretty decent shot. Well, I'll come with you then. Harmony shrugged and turned towards the store's entrance. And don't think you uh, can argue. I'm the best marks pony anyone's known, and I'm pretty sure you want to hit them before the sun sets. Just give me a few to gather what I need, and we can head out. No offense, Harmony, but you aren't exactly... I put my hoof to my chin as I searched for the right words. Combat proficient? Are you saying I can't handle myself in a fight? That seems to have struck a nerve. Did you forget about how I saved your flank a week ago? Alright, alright. I filled my hooves. Just... Be careful. Those two looked like they'd seen the worst of the wastes that they had to offer. I just don't want you to get yourself killed over this. Don't worry. I got a something special I've been saving just for a time like this. Harmony looked back with a wide grin. They ain't gonna see it coming. I promise that. She opened the door and had to sidestep around Predius as he strode out. Pallet cleared her throat. I'm going to see if Shortstaff needs anything. You going to be a right storm? I nodded, hooping my cigarette box back to my muzzle and biting down on another of the amazing stress relieving sticks. I may have not realized the need to smoke in the last week, but damn does it feel good now, as I put the pack back in my satchel and hoofed around for my lighter. Prettius merely leaned forward and touched his horn to the end of my cigarette, lighting it with a fire spell. I puffed a few times to get it going and sighed happily. Thanks, Preet. I watched as Pallet jumped into the air and glided her way to the entrance of Stimpak's clinic. If we're going after those hunters, may I make a suggestion? He sounded more direct than ever as he spoke. 
Seeing as the contract out for me specifies that they need me alive, I suggest you stay behind me as we approach. They'll be less likely to fire if there's a risk of hitting me. That was already the plan. I may not have good luck, but I certainly wasn't stupid. The fact that he of all ponies brought it up intrigued me, though. But why do you care if I get shot? My goal is the same as theirs, and I didn't think you'd care who turned you in, so long as you got their one piece. He let out a quick laugh. You forget, Miss Storm. I find you interesting to be around. He turned around and held his hoof out to me. You are an enigma, a pre-war puzzle just waiting to be solved. If I were to go with the sisters, then it would be the most boring trek that would most likely result in my untimely death. She stopped as he came around the front of me again. If it came down to it, who would one want to protect more? An injured sister, or just one of the dozen potential money-making contracts? While true, what do you even hope to gain from solving a puzzle like me? I smirked and took another drag on my smoke, holding it in and savoring the slight hint of cherry it gave. Knowledge? Understanding? Wisdom? He shrugged. The books in the library did not give me the information inside of them with the some ulterior motive, but instead did so the intent that whoever reads could use that knowledge to build something greater than themselves. I put my hooves up and chuckled, blowing out wispy clouds. Okay there, Plato. No need to philosophize anymore. I looked at his generically shocked expression lingering on his face. Hey, I read books when I was young too, you know. My parents had mostly boring ones on hoof, with the only other real fun option being Daring Do. I sighed, remembering that I still didn't get to finish the end of book three. I'm sorry, but I never expected to hear the name of one of the greatest philosophers of all time to come from your mouths. He stopped himself, and shifted nervously as I raised my eyebrow to him. What I meant was that it's good to see another fan of his work. Speaking of work, Harmony grumbled as a large pipe forced the door open. Y'all care to get the door for me? Prius's horn glowed and pulled the door back, allowing Harmony to carefully guide herself through the entrance of her shop. What I had thought was a pipe turned out to be the hulking barrel of one of the biggest rifles I'd ever seen. It sat attached to a battle saddle that sagged heavily on her side, the other half of it uh, not counterweighted nearly enough. As she stepped into the street and swung the enormous barrel towards us, I was fairly sure my face looked the same as Prez had a few moments ago. That? Um... I stammered, not really able to comprehend the awesomeness before me. That sure is something. I forced out, realizing after the fact that I sounded like a blathering idiot. I forced myself to deadpan as I looked at her. You sure that's going to be enough? Perhaps you want to bring something a little less subtle. A mega spell, perhaps? Harmony rolled her eyes with a smirk and trot past me. Come on, ladies. We need to leave now if we plan on hitting them anytime soon before sunset. Hey, Preed. Have you ever read about a gun that big? I asked turning around and trotting beside him after Harmony. Yes, I believe the correct term is... Cannon. He snickered and nudged me. Oh, this was definitely going to be a trip out of town. I hated, knowingly, walking into ambushes. But other than wasting an entire day's trip to loop around west, I didn't see any other way around this. Not to mention, they might have slipped back into town tonight and attempt to kill us while we were sleeping, if we waited for tomorrow. But this is why Harmony was getting set up on one of the hills quite a ways back, and Prudius was walking with a bounce to a step in front of me. If they want my life, they're going to have to try their best to take it, and pay for it dearly. Storm, up on the ridge to our left. He spoke in a whisper. Sure enough, up ahead was a rocky crag that jut out from the hills, and a small round lump sat atop it, stood plainly out from the jagged rocks around it. I bit down on my rifle and pulled it up myself, keeping it ready as I quickly looked about the, for cover to use when the shit hit the fan. I found a few candidates that would serve well, 
but the one rock I would have loved to use was a bit of a stretch to get to, as I contemplated if I should make for it or not. A figure walked out from behind it, making Preet and I come to a halt. The pistol mare flashed a wicked smile as she stepped in the middle of the path, slowly pulling her coat from herself to reveal the bit of her revolver again. Just give it up, sugar. There ain't no way a mare like you can win against us. She called out, giving herself away as she is far too sure that I'd lose. Besides, a real mare doesn't use dirty tactics like hiding behind her charge. I spit my rifle into my hoof, propping myself up on it so I could talk. Oh, and I suppose bringing a sniper to the fight is a fair game? I laughed out at her, keeping myself pressed close to Preed. I really hoped that Harmony was almost done setting up back there. This was an over 1,000 meter shot, which she always said she could make, but I fucking hope she wasn't exaggerating. And adding scopes to pistols? I can't decide if you're crazy or just downright stupid. <laughs> you're just sore that you ain't got help on your side. The pistol mare looked down and marveled at her own weapon, running her hoof down the holster. Ain't no problem with a little edge to the competition, is there? My thoughts exactly. I tightened my fetlock around the barrel, waiting for the right time. The small lump on the rock face exploded into dark cloud that coated the surrounding rock with a deep crimson. The loud crack of thunder that followed Harmony's round made the pistol mare flinch and spin. Sweetie, no! She screamed as I pulled out my rifle. I propped myself up against Prius as she went for her gun, studying my rifle. I got my crosshairs lined up just as she pulled her revolver out, doing so much faster than I anticipated. I fired off my shot, watching as the round I had aimed for her head punched into the scope of her pistol. She screamed in pain, though through her bit, as the scope came apart in her face. The bitch taking it back around the rock she appeared from. Preet, get to cover. I pushed myself up and pointed myself at the biggest rock I could use to fight from. I quickly cantered over to it, finding that it wasn't nearly as big as I'd hoped it was. The bitch popped out from a rock before I could get myself set up firing as she ran and forcing me to hit the dirt. I counted the shots as my heart raced, waiting for her to pause to duck and cover to reload. Three, four, then came the pause. I pushed myself up and pulled the rifle just in time to hear her still barreling towards me. She fired again, the round sparking off the rock just missing me. I threw myself to the side as she fired again, missing with her sixth and last shot. I did my best to roll off my dive, but found myself too slow while holding my rifle. The mare spit out her pistol and dove at me before I realized that I would be better off dumping the gun to stay quick on my hooves. The idea had come too slow and I found an iron horseshoe planted against the side of my head. The mare attempted to climb onto me as and pinned me to the dirt, but I managed to keep one of my rear legs up and thrust her off me. As we both got back to our hooves, I could see that the scope had torn up the eye a good s on her face. The small, uh, shining cuts were filled with bits of glass glistening across her once pristine coat. Honey, you got real ugly. I coughed out, rubbing at my sore cheek with one hoof. If anything, now was a real fight. Hoof to hoof. Her against me. You're fucking dead! She screamed, charging at me again, moving her hooves faster than I anticipated. And this mare was all over quick, as I scrambled to block her incoming blows, failing miserably and getting sent to the dirt. And this time I didn't have the lucky placement of my legs, and she jumped onto me with all of her force. I felt the air rush out of my lungs, and prayed for my ribs not to snap as I raised my hooves to defend myself. She screamed and Leslie pounded at her my chest, the anger of her dead sister keeping her eyes focused as I gave what felt like futile blows against her sides. The sharp report of a gun filled the air, and the mare quit moving with a shudder, flopping forward onto my chest as I gasped for air. The clatter of my rifle falling to the dirt and Prudy's helping to lift the mare from me 
was a sight that meant more to me in the world than anything. As I breathed with wheezing gasps, I wasn't sure what I should do anymore. He's saved my life more than once now, and he's not so useful in a fight, but at least he's some pony who every pony else will underestimate. Do I really want to turn him in after all this is done? Is there even a way I could convince whoever wants him that he's not worth their time or money? Now I know what you're thinking, Miss Storm, and the answer is no. He sat down next to me and stared intently into my eyes. You must complete the contract. He sat and waited for me to slowly get my breath back. That mare had really worked me over with those heavy horseshoes, and I knew that for the next few days my sides were going to be sore as hell. Maybe once I get to Chasm, I could sp sneak us into one of the hot springs for a bit. Really relax before continuing on our trip. Oh, and one other thing, Miss Storm. He twisted his head as his horn glowed softly, the mare's dusty revolver floating over in his grip. I'm sorry I melted your pistol, but this one might be a bit better anyway. Take the scope off, and you got a deal. I smiled and patted on my chest, letting out a groan before I rolled back over. Wait, are you hurt? Did she break a rib? Prudius spoke up, putting his hoof on my shoulder. Worse. I grunted and pulled the crumpled and torn white cardboard box from my satchel. She broke my smokes. Harmony walked up to the rock ledge as Prudius and I finished pulling what we could from the sniper mare. It was hard to pick through her belongings when every second we had to search under a different pile of minced pony meat. We were threatened with slipping on them and falling off the rocks to our death. Find anything useful? I called out to Prudius, who had opted to search what was left of the rear of the mare. Not in particular. He positively held some unidentifiable piece of gore coated cloth to his hoof. Unless you think that this lingerie is still savageable. He flashed a smile as I deadpanned. Well, at least your sister had all good stuff. One out of two ain't bad. I carefully made my way back to the ledge, thankful to be away from it. Besides the pistol and its holster, her sister had a whole box of 44 ammo for her pistol, which I could split for my rifle as well. On top of that, she had a couple bottles of brown but drinkable water, a healing potion, half a sparkle cola that was neatly taped shut, a broken toaster, nearly complete gun cleaning kit, a quart of oil, and 36 caps to her name. The only thing we managed to savage from Miss Stroganoff here was her sniper rifle and eight 308 rounds. Wowee, this thing really does wonders! Harmony stopped and marveled at the three meter wide red splotch that covered the rocks. I've been meaning to test this rifle on a live target. Got a steal on it when some merchant from Salt Cube City needed a pair of Hydra injectors and some armor. She looked back at the overkill death machine strapped to her side. Guess he figured those would help him more than a box of rounds for this wood. I've been meaning to ask, but what the hell kind of round does that thing shoot? I wiggled my nose as even as I walked up to it. Her rifle smelled like unburnt powder. You turned her into jelly with just one shot. It's a 20 mil, but Mama would have kicked my ass for a shot that bad. She shook her head and sighed, as I couldn't even begin to explain how backwards that sounded. If the round hadn't airburst and hit her with it, she would have been a fine red mist instead of chunks. She sighed deeper and took the ammo on her side. Got three more tries, anyhow. You didn't even hit! I flail as I sat my jaw, <clears throat> hung between my words. Who the hell makes that thing, and where can I get one? It was an early war project. Prius spoke up as he daintily stepped over the bloody chunks on his way to us. Meant for use against first talons the zebras sent against us. When they were given the alchemical drug, 
attacks. From the zebras, our bigger guns no longer had the punch to bring them down. So, they built these. He sat down beside me and scraped the gore from his hooves as he continued. Though they were phased out fairly early when dragons became more common, focusing more research on magical energy weapons that seemed to affect both enemies more anyway. Harmony, I love you like a sister, and as your sister, I just want to ask... I leaned in close and reached my hoof out to the beautiful weapon. Can... can I have it? I'll pay you back for it, I swear. Hell no, you can't have it. She took a step back and rolled her eyes. I'm keeping it for shop defense. Besides, you already owe me for the pip buck. Not to mention the half dozen other things that I've brought you. She reached her hoof back and pulled a small burlap sack from her saddlebags. Holding it out as Prius's magic snagged it. I got you a couple rolls of bandage, a healing potion, another thirty rounds for your rifle, and a couple cans of beans. Thanks, Harmony. I smiled and got back to my hooves. I walked up and threw my hooves around her in a hug, wincing as she hugged me back and squeezed my bruised sides. With a whimper, I let go and took a step back. Guess we should be heading out then. I looked back and gave a glance to Prettius before looking to Harmony with a shrug. I might be back in another couple of days, so if I am, I'll swing in and pay you what I can for all this when I'm done. I'm holding you to that, missy. She smiled and gave a small wave. Come on, Preet. Let's get a move on. I slowly stepped forward, starting to make my way back down the road. We've still got a good half hour before we lose light, and I'd like to have make some progress today rather than none. Whatever you say, boss, he called out, quickly making his way past me down the slope. Boss? I chuckled. You know, I kind of like that. Chapter End Keep your friends close and care for them, for they are like the steps of a ladder. You wouldn't like one treacherous stair to break under your hoof. Quests finished. A sweet rivalry. Quest started, a sweet rivalry. Levels earned, none. Perks earned, none.